St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Mr. and Mrs. Harry Widevan from Paris, Ontario. And the Mass is offered in thanksgiving for all the blessings that their family have received and in memory of Gordon Widevan, who passed away December the 17th. We know that this television Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land, and with me they join in thanking you for the gift of this telecast. And so we begin, as we should begin all things, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And also we take a moment to acknowledge that we are in the presence of God, that we acknowledge the gifts that we have received from our God, and at the same time, the lack of gratitude that we have shown for the gifts that we have received. And so we ask forgiveness. We ask, we ask it of God, and we ask it of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. God, light of all nations, give us the joy of lasting peace and fill us with your radiance as you filled the hearts of our fathers. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. The word of the Lord.
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After feeding the 5,000 with the loaves and fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead onto the other side to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after saying farewell to them, he went up to the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and Jesus was alone on the land. And when he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And then Jesus got into the boat with them and the wind ceased and they were utterly astounded for they did not understand about their loaves, but their hearts were hardened. This is the gospel of the Lord. For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. I think to truly appreciate the gospel text, we must recall the, the multiplication of the five loaves of bread and the two fish. After the, the crowd had been satisfied, Jesus immediately sent his disciples away before he dismissed the crowd. And Mark doesn't tell us why, but we get a clue as to why that happened in the Gospel of John. John tells us that after the crowd had been fed, there was a move to take Jesus and to make him king. And that was the last thing that Jesus desired. It was that very way of power that he had rejected at the time of the temptations, and yet he could see it coming. He didn't want his disciples to be infected and caught up in this nationalistic outburst. And so Jesus sent them away in the boat lest they too become inflamed and, con and caught up in that particular movement. So Jesus stayed to calm the crowd, bid them farewell, and went off by himself on the hillside to pray. Jesus was alone in prayer, and we can assume with many a problem on his mind and probably a many a burden in his heart. There was the hostility of the Orthodox people, the frightened suspicion of Herod, and the many political dreamers who saw in him a nationalistic messiah. Scholars tell us that at that particular point, the lake was probably only about four miles wide, and in the light of the moon, he could see what was transpiring. He said the wind was up and he saw the boat with the men in it and having a struggle to try to reach the other side. But for me, the, the important thing is that immediately, immediately, when Jesus saw his friends in trouble, his own problems were set aside. The moment for prayer was past. Jesus forgot himself and went to the help of his friends. For me, as I say, that's the very essence of the teaching of Jesus. For him, the cry of human need surpassed all other claims. The same is true of the hunger and the weariness that the disciples had experienced by those who had eaten of the loaves and fishes. The ministry of Jesus was above all else, one of love, of compassion, of service, and availability. And he invites us, his disciples, to live the same way. I think we find in that first reading from the letter of John probably one of the most beautiful and profound statements in all of Scripture, where he says, God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. I think at the beginning of every new year, a certain ritual comes to my mind, and it goes back some 30 years when I was working and living in, in Peru. And I recall a ritual that came from some of the provinces in the mountains. Prior to New Year's, the children would gather together and they'd gather old clo clothing, pieces of straw, and they'd put together essentially a mannequin. And when they had the mannequin put together, they had a, a little piece of cardboard or something with the name or the number of the year that had just finished on top of it. 
But what was for most important for me was the family would gather together, and within the hour prior to midnight, the parents would initiate the ritual by asking forgiveness, asking forgiveness of their children for the ways that they had failed them during the past year. The children, in turn, would ask forgiveness of the parents for the ways that they had failed them, the way they had shown disrespect or disregarded what they had said, and perhaps the way they had treated their neighbors. A beautiful ritual which culminated and terminated in the asking of forgiveness and the embrace. They went out into the street then at midnight and burnt the old man or the old year, a sign and symbol of that commitment to live better, to live in the future in love and respect. And then they in turn embraced their neighbors. You know, these particular rituals speak to us very profoundly, I think, of our primary vocation. And I must say that the primary vocation of loving God and loving neighbor brings to mind another incident. A good buddy of mine, Bishop George Marskell, a native of Hamilton, Ontario, was on his way back to Brazil. George, Bishop George had been home. He knew that he had pancreatic cancer, but he wanted to go back to the Amazon, and that's where he, was, he wanted to spend the rest of his time. But I remember the day that I got word that he had died. And I went to the office to open up his will. And in his will, I found an envelope with an appendix that he had written some 14 years before that, before he died. And he wrote on it the following. He said, in a few hours, I'll be returning to Brazil. This month of furlough has made me conscious again of the great love of God. I'm grateful for the family I was born into, for Scarborough and for my vocations. Christian, priesthood, and episcopacy. I trust in God's mercy and ask God's forgiveness of those whom I have offended. I would like to be buried simply. If I die in Brazil, I want to be buried in the cemetery among the people. I was called by God in God's love to serve in Itacoatiara. But the last paragraph reads as follows. I hope that I have learned that God alone is my strength and that I have learned a little how to love, for that is our greatest vocation. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God and God in them. Please join me in prayer. We lift up in prayer this day the intentions of the many people who join us via television and the many intentions that they've asked that we remember. And so for all of them and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for each of us, that each of us has the gift to be peacemakers, that we can live in peace with ourselves, with our families, and with our neighbors. And for that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the victims of violence. We pray for their families. We pray for all of them. We'll know the peace and the love of God at all times. And for that, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord. Lord God, we ask you to receive us, be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity 
cleanse us all from our sin. Thank you. And pray, friends, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And Father of peace, accept our devotion and sincerity, and our, by our sharing in this mystery, draw us closer to each other and to you. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All-powerful, ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. This Christmas, a new light has dawned upon the world, and God has become one with us. Your eternal word has taken upon himself our human weakness, giving our mortal nature immortal value. So marvelous is this oneness between God and humanity that in Christ, humanity, man restores to man the gift of everlasting life. In our joy, we sing to your glory with all the choirs of angels. holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this saving cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember our brothers and sisters and all who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. We continue our prayer just as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and happy are we who are called to share in this supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer by Father Daniel Fleming. Jesus, may all that is you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run from the love which you offer, but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed your light and your love. Keep calling to me until that day comes, when, with your saints, I may praise you forever. Amen. And let us pray. Lord, may this sacrament be our strength. Teach us to value all the good you give us and help us to strive for eternal life. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Yes. May Almighty God bless you 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Have a good day. Our thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Harry Whitveen from Paris, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10, so if you'd like to order it, just send a check or a money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C, to M6. Oh,